landscape lesson four we're going to talk about atmospheric perspective and this means when the hue and the tones are getting lighter as it goes into the distance you can see this particularly on a misty morning when the things in the foreground are in much sharper detail and then slowly as you get further away they get lighter and less detailed more hazy as they go all the way into the distance. And it's a really useful technique when you're painting to help you show that illusion of depth. The background has got the least amount of contrast. The middle ground is a bit more and then your foreground is high contrast which means really deep blacks and really white whites and therefore you get much higher definition and more detail. You can also see this in cityscapes, particularly if there's a lot of smog around, you can see how the buildings get much lighter as you go into the distance. What we're going to do is to paint or draw a landscape with the dark areas in the front and then create the mountains or hills as you go back into the distance, are getting a bit lighter each time. You can use lots of different colours. I find the best one to use is blue. We're going to create a simple atmospheric perspective painting, drawing or collage. So you can do it with cut out bits of paper if you like. You choose one colour and white and you start with the sky, so the lightest tone. Each layer you add a little bit more of that colour, just a tiny bit, until you get to the front. Colour the final silhouette layer at the bottom in the blackest or purest, darkest, boldest version of the colour that you are using. You don't need to go into too much detail with this. So what you're going to need is a pencil, a brush, some water, paper, white paint blue paint and some black paint. You start by drawing your hills. So it can be fairly simple. This is your foreground, so this is the hill that's closest to you and each section you go further back is a hill that's further away into the distance. You're using the top of the paper to suggest that the land is going back into the paper. This foreground you could put in a tree that would be quite big. If you did a tree on this hill back here, it would be a whole lot smaller because this is a lot further away. The size of these trees shows you how far away these ones would be tiny. And back here, you would hardly even see a tree. It would be so small. You can start with the sky. I'm just painting the sky pure white. You can get a bit of paper underneath so you don't make a mess of your table. You can paint right to the edge. I'm trying to use my paintbrush with a horizontal stroke so the brush strokes are going with the landscape. It's painting white on white, but it is worth doing because you've got the texture of the paint. For this next layer, I'm gonna add a tiny bit of blue to my white. This would be the furthest distant mountain. You probably want to use a lighter pencil so you can't see your pencil marks. I don't have to be too precise around the tree because when I put the black in, I can go over this. And the next layer is here behind this tree. So again, adding more blue paint. This one I'm going to do pure blue because this one I'm going to do black. I'm adding a tiny bit of white to make it a bit more opaque. You can see this is quite translucent, this blue is quite thin. might create a texture of trees to give it a variation and make you feel like they're getting closer. Now this final layer I'm going to do black. I might mix a tiny bit of blue in with that black just to make the black a bit more interesting. Black's a bit dead otherwise. The 
you could add more trees here if you wanted to or anything else to this near layer that would come over the background. But hopefully you can see how this is creating an illusion of depth as you have this dark silhouette in the front and then some more texture, stronger colour and then as you go back it gets softer and lighter until you get all the way back to the sky where it's really white. If you've tried this before and you want to really experiment, obviously you could try doing a more detailed picture. Watercolour's a nice one to use. I did this painting earlier. You can see how I've created all the details and different colours and got a range of colours in the foreground. But in the background, there are less colours. It's bluer and simpler. This is some students' work. You could use pencil or charcoal if you would like, or pastel. See what materials you have at home and experiment.